deaths from communicable diseases after natural disasters are less common as the article by who officials michel gaia and mayor a, a mayor a connelly and john watson in a who study epidemics and natural disasters the link of which will be put up here as well as in the description box below the risk for communicable disease transmission after disasters is associated primarily with the size and characteristics of the population displaced specifically specifically the proximity of safe water and functioning latrines the nutritional status of the displaced population the level of immunity to vaccine preventable diseases such as measles and the access to health care services Outbreaks are less frequently reported in disaster affected populations than in conflict affected populations where two thirds of the deaths may be from communicable diseases. Malnutrition increases the risk for death from communicable diseases and is more com common in conflict affected populations particularly if their displacement is related to long term conflict. Although outbreaks after flooding have been better documented than those after earthquakes, volcanic eruptions or tsunamis, natural disasters regardless of type that do not result in population displacement are rarely associated with outbreaks. Historically, the large scale displacement of populations as a result of natural disasters is not common which likely contributes to the low risk of for outbreaks overall and to the variability in risk among disasters of different types. Access to safe water can be jeopardized by natural disasters. Diarrheal disease outbreaks can occur after drinking water has been contaminated and have been reported after flooding and related uh, displacement. An outbreak of diarrheal disease after flooding in Bangladesh in 2004 involved 17,000 cases. Vibrio cholerae or uh, one Ogawa and one Inaba and enterotoxigenic Escheria coli were isolated. A large number, that is more than 16,000 cases of cholera epidemic in West Bengal in 1998 was attributed to preceding floods and floods in Mozambique in January, March 2000 led to an increase in the incidence of diarrhea. In a large study undertaken in Indonesia in 1992-93, flooding was identified as a significant risk factor for diarrheal illnesses caused by Salmonella enterica, serotype paratyphi or a paratyphoid fever. In a separate evaluation of risk factors for infection with Cryptosporidum parvum in Indonesia in 2001 to 2003, case patients were four times more likely than controls to have been exposed to flooding. The risk for diarrheal disease outbreaks following the natural disasters is higher in developing countries than in industrialized countries. In Aceh province, Indonesia, a rapid health assessment in the town of Kalang two weeks after the December 2004 tsunami found that 100% of the survivors drank from unprotected wells and that 85% of residents reported diarrhea in the previous two weeks. In Muzaffarabad, Pakistan, an outbreak of acute watery diarrhea occurred in an unplanned, poorly equipped camp of 1,800 people after the 2005 earthquake. The outbreak involved 700, more than 750 cases, mostly in adults, and was controlled after adequate water and sanitation facilities were provided. In the United States, diarrheal illness was noted after Hurricane Allison and Hurricane Katrina and noro, norovirus salmonella, the toxig, toxigenic and non-toxigenic cholerae were confirmed among Katrina evacuees. Hepatitis A and E are also transmitted by the fecal oral route in association with lack of access to safe water and sanitation. Hepatitis A is endemic in most developing countries and most children are exposed and develop immunity at an early age. As a result, the risk for large outbreaks is usually low in these settings. In hepatitis E endemic areas, outbreaks frequently follow heavy rains and floods. The illness is generally mid, mild and self-limited, but in pregnant women, case fatality rates can reach 25%. After the 2005 earthquake in Pakistan, sporadic hepatitis E cases and clusters were common in areas with poor access to safe drinking water. 
Over 1,200 cases of acute jaundice, many confirmed as uh, hepatitis E, occurred among the displaced. Clusters of both hepatitis A and hepatitis E were noted in Aceh after the December 2004 tsunami. Leptospirosis is an epidemic-prone zoonotic bacterial disease that can be transmitted by direct contact with contaminated water. Rodents shed large amounts of leptospires in their urine and transmission occurs through contact of the skin and mucous membranes with urine. Flooding facilities spread, flooding facilities spread of the organism because of the proliferation of rodents and proximity of rodents to humans on shared high ground. Outbreaks of leptospirosis occur in Taiwan, Republic of China, associated with Typhoon Nali in 2001, in Mumbai, India, after flooding in 2000, in Argentina after flooding in 1998, and in the Krasnodar region of the Russian Federation in 1997. After a flooding-related outbreak of leptospirosis in Brazil in 1996, spatial analysis indicated that the incidence rates of leptospirosis doubled inside the flood-prone areas of Rio de Janeiro. In the aftermath of the Asian tsunami, WHO and UNICEF teams panned out to spray DDT and mosquito repellents in camps and relief shelters in India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Thailand and the Maldives to prevent secondary disasters like diarrhea, or cholera breaking out among traumatized survivors. It turned out to be an effective preventive tool and best practice in disaster mitigation. The public infrastructure in India, Indonesia, Thailand and Maldives supported effective disease control. The preventive measures ensured that apart from diarrhea, the preventive steps effectively mitigated cholera and malaria. Waterborne diseases are endemic to disaster affected landscapes. Disruption in infrastructure services like power supply affects cold storage facilities of vaccines. Low-lying low tropical countries like Bangladesh and the Philippines are extremely vulnerable to waterborne diseases. It is, however, not true that decaying corpses spread infections. Vectors need live bodies as hosts to spread infection. Through this fact, though this fact has been disseminated by agencies like WHO, UNICEF, Pan American Health Organization, and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, the myth of dead bodies spreading diseases refuses to go away. Rue experts, according to this link, which I will be putting up here as well as in the description box below. Myths that disaster affected populations are at high risk for outbreaks and that dead bodies contribute to this risk are common. Conversely, some experts deny high short-term risk after disasters. The risk of communicable diseases transmission after natural disasters, disasters is low but real and it is not directly related to the disease, disasters and dead bodies but primarily associated with the characteristics of the displaced population within the local disease ecology or their resilience. This belief supports the need for rapid but accurate assessment of health status, risk and needs, the results of which greatly influence the nature of relief activities. Key functions of relief teams are communicable diseases, surveillance and early warning, and rapid response to epidemic prone situations or outbreaks, says Remy Michel, Jean-Paul Domochet, and Dominique Baudon in the study Risk for Epidemics After Natural Disasters, available on this particular link which will be put up here as well as in the description box below this video. The relationship between natural disasters and communicable diseases is frequently misconstrued. The risk for outbreaks is often presumed to be very high in the chaos that follows natural disasters. However, the risk factors for outbreaks after disasters are associated primarily with population displacement. The availability of safe water and sanitation facilities, the degree of crowding, the underlying health status of the population and the availability of healthcare services all interact within the context of the local disease ecology to influence the risk for communicable diseases and death in the affected population. 
we outline the risk factors for outbreaks after a disaster review the communicable diseases likely to be important and establish priorities to address communicable diseases in disaster settings says say authors michelle gaier and mary a connolly and john watson in a who study called epidemics after natural disasters the link of which will be put up here as well as in the description box below now let's go on to vector borne diseases natural disasters particularly meteorological events such as cyclones hurricanes and flooding can affect vector borne vector breeding sites and vector borne disease transmission while initial flooding may wash away existing mosquito breeding sites stra standing water caused by heavy rainfall or overflow of rivers can create new breeding sites this situation can result with typically some weeks delay in an increase of the vector population and potential for disease transmission depending on the local mosquito vector species and its preferred habitat the crowding of infected and susceptible hosts a weakened public health infrastructure and interruptions of ongoing control programs are all risk factors for vector borne disease transmission malaria outbreaks in the wake of flooding are well known phenomena an earthquake in costa rica's atlantic region in 1991 was associated with changes in habitat that were beneficial for breeding and preceded an extreme rise in malaria cases additionally periodic flooding like linked to el nino southern oscillation has been associated with malaria epidemics in the dry coastal region of northern peru dengue transmission is influenced by meteorological conditions including rainfall and humidity and often exhibits strong seasonality however transmission is not directly associated with flooding such events may coincide with periods of high risk for transmission and may be exacerbated by increased availability of the vector's breeding sites mostly artificial containers caused by disruption of basic water supply and solid waste disposal services the risk for outbreaks can be influenced by other complicating factors such as changes in human behavior that is increased exposure to mosquitoes while sleeping outside movement from dengue non endemic to endemic areas a pause in disease control activities overcrowding or changes in the habitat that promote mosquito breeding including landslide deforestation river damming and rerouting of water other diseases associated with natural disasters Tetanus is not transmitted person to person but is caused by a toxin released by the an anaerobic tetanus bacillus uh, Clostridium tetani Contaminated wounds particularly in populations where vaccination coverage levels are low are associated with illness and death from tetanus A cluster of 106 cases of tetanus including 20 deaths occurred in Aceh and peaked 2 and 1/2 weeks after the tsunami Cases were also reported in Pakistan following the 2005 earthquake in Kashmir An unusual outbreak of Cochidiomycosis occurred after January 1994 in Southern California earthquake The infection is not transmitted person to person and is caused by the fungus Cochidiodites sorry cochidioides imitis which is found in soil in certain semi arid areas of north and south america this outbreak was associated with exposure to increased levels of airborne dust subsequent to landslides in the aftermath of the earthquake vaccination drives and relief shelters are the indispensable best practice to prevent outbreak of diseases in disaster affected landscapes sanitizing water clogged areas disinfecting neighborhoods in mosquito infested areas maintenance of sanitation infrastructure are some of the most basic preventive measures excuse me in preventing outbreak of infectious diseases vaccination drives have to be continued without let up and and clearance of dam bursts sewage spillage or any contamination are the basic elements in disease control Epidemics like SARS, MERS, Ebola, hepatitis B, tetanus, typhoid, cholera, chikungunya, dengue, H1N1, H5N9, H7N9 can be the cause of pandemics and global and global disasters. We know about COVID, don't we? Some of these diseases are the consequences of hydrometeorological disasters themselves. HIV present challenges 
to the interconnected global village dedicated by sorry dictated by aviation interdependence and the internet no part of the world any race any system or polity no infrastructure is safe from any epidemic which can become a pandemic in the day and age of a global village historical documentation of pandemics shows global vulnerability as this list shows i'll put up this link here as well as in the description box below Bangladesh and the Philippines both low lying countries in the tropics and very vulnerable to storms cyclones typhoons are extremely prone to cholera and dysentery the philippines and bangladesh are also vulnerable to hepatitis a and e typhoid malaria dengue yellow fever japanese encephalitis a uh, cholera and plague according to the web website philippines major infectious diseases the link of which is going to be put up here as well as in the description box below epidemics and pandemics are capable of decimating populations including the first responders and the medical professionals vaccination drives culling of livestock sanitizing suburbs quarantining infected people and animals have defied mutation of viruses in the day and age of climate change induced hydro meteorological disasters in 2009 who sounded a global alert to fight h1n1 the pandemic global monitoring and surveillance complemented culling and isolation of the infected persons uh, this link is also going to be put up here in august in about august 2010 who declared that the virus had now become or moved to post pandemic status it was an example of disaster mitigation with global coordination to sustain such global coordination to prevent spread of epidemics disaster managers that is administrators ngos first responders communities have to be trained regularly administrative measures needed include checklists like mock drills mass communication and dissemination of guidelines in the mass media surveillance vaccination drives quarantining or isolating infected persons robust treatment financial subsidies for treatment trade friendly tax regimes and infrastructure to facilitate smooth flow of life saving drugs robust media scrutiny of disaster mitigation year round prevent measures to mitigate spread of diseases are, are the most effective means of epidemic center disasters let me read read it preventive measures to mitigate spread of diseases are the most effective means of epidemic center disasters following measures are indispensable tools in preventing breakout of epidemics they are flood control measures by managing reservoirs and dams maintenance of sewage infrastructure maintenance of sanitation infrastructure sanitary disposal of waste sanitizing storm water drains and keeping dry surroundings devoid of clogged water avoiding water stagnation by maintaining sanitized environs channeling storm water drains in deference to gravity and maintaining it clear of encroachments preventive rounds of vaccine inoculation to identified vulnerable populations disease surveillance well equipped medical infrastructure for every unit of 1000 people and 500 livestock scrutiny of all the above administrative responsibilities by independent media that is all for tonight We have finished the sub chapter on desertification and epidemics tonight. I have personally done a lot of media work on the subject of desertification. Ah, uh, include that includes one world service broadcast on DW that is Deutsche Welle Radio, two multilingual documentary films on combating uh, desertification, two podcasts on combating desertification, six photo blogs on combating desertification. These have been published, which I'll put up. The links of which will be put up. two video blogs on combating desertification three articles on combating desertification the links of all these are going to be found in the description box below the video in the next week's reading i will read about el nino southern oscillation until then take care stay home stay safe and keep smiling ciao